Read right now. A Scarf for Keiko by Anne Malaspina Illustrated by Marilee Lydiard The needles slipped from Sam's hands and the wool tangled up in knots. Knitting made him want to pull out his hair. Next to him, Keiko bent over her wool. Her needles flew like the wind. Click, clack, click, clack. Rows of blue stitches grew inch by inch. Good work, Keiko, said their teacher, Mrs. Olson. Hmm, having a problem, Sam? Click, clack, click, clack. Remember, pick up the yarn, wrap it around the needle. Pull the stitch through, she said. We must do our part for the war effort. Our soldiers are counting on you, Sam. <sighs> That's a mistake, Sam thought. I am a terrible knitter. No one should count on me. In the lunchroom, Sam felt a tap on his shoulder. Keiko smiled at him. I can help you with your knitting. Keiko was Sam's next-door neighbor. Ever since President Roosevelt had declared war on Japan in December, some of Sam's friends refused to talk to Keiko and to the other Japanese-American students at the first street school in Boyle Heights. I don't need any help, mumbled Sam, turning away. Keiko's smile disappeared. Suit yourself. She turned her back and sat at an empty table. After lunch, Sam played catch with his best friend Jack. Have you heard from Mike? Jack asked as he caught the ball smoothly. Sam shook his head. When he thought about his older brother fighting in the war, Sam's stomach tied up in knots like the yarn on his desk. Don't worry, Jack said. He's probably too busy winning the war to write a letter. After school, Sam saw Keiko pedaling past him down East First Street on her fire engine red bicycle. A car slowed down. A teenage boy leaned out the window. An egg landed on the sidewalk. Go back to Japan! The boy yelled. Her bike skidded, but Keiko didn't fall. She pedaled even faster around the corner as Sam watched. That night, Sam listened to the radio with his parents. President Roosevelt was announcing the latest war news. Do you think we're going to win? Sam asked. We've all got to do our part, Dad says. I hear that you're knitting for the soldiers. Good for you! Ah, oh, knitting again, Sam sighed. On the way to school, Keiko's brakes screeched at the crosswalk. Hello, Sam. Knitting needles stuck out of her bag. Standing next to Jack, Sam pretended not to hear. How's Mike? The light changed and they pushed across the street. I hope he's okay! Keiko shouted, flying down the street. Jack elbowed him. You shouldn't talk to Keiko Sato. What would Mike think? Sam's brother had helped Keiko fix her bicycle once. He had shown her how to patch a flat tire and grease the chain. Mike wouldn't mind Sam talking to Keiko, but that was too hard to explain to Jack. I didn't talk to her, Sam said. She talked to me. On Friday, Mom asked Sam to go to her favorite flower shop in Little Tokyo to pick up flowers for the Shabbat table. The trolley stopped in front of Mr. Sato's grocery store. Mr. Sato was sweeping up broken glass. Sam got off the trolley with his head down. Mr. Sato didn't see him. The flower shop was closed.
Just before sunset, Mom lit the Shabbat candles and said the blessing. After they sat down, Dad said the blessings over the wine and the challah. As they began to eat, Dad cleared his throat. <coughs> President Roosevelt is worried that people with Japanese ancestors are spies, he said. He's sending them away. Mom shook her head. Oh, the war is terrible. My sisters in Poland are in great danger. Mike is risking his life to fight, and now little Tokyo looks like a ghost town. Sam put down his fork. But Keiko isn't a spy. Of course she isn't, Dad said. Mom nodded. I'm going to invite the Satos for dinner tomorrow. They're good Americans and the best neighbors. Keiko wasn't at school on Monday. Knitting was a disaster. Sam almost poked himself in the eye. He threw down his needles. I can't do it! Mrs. Olson said he could write a letter to Mike instead. Dear Mike, I'm sorry that I won't be able to knit you a pair of socks. I'm a terrible knitter. Keiko's the best knitter in our class, but she may have to go away soon. Please come home safely. Your brother, Sam. After school, Keiko was sitting on her front steps. Hello, Keiko, Sam called out. She didn't look up. The only sound was her needles. Click, clack, click, clack. The Satos can't come to dinner, Mom told Sam. They have to pack. They just learned they're being sent north to an internment camp in the desert. She gestured at the unfamiliar tea set on the kitchen table. They can only bring what they can carry. So I offered to take care of Mrs. Sato's precious tea set. I told her it will be here when they get home. How long will they be away? Sam asked. <sighs> Mom sighed. No one knows. And then they were gone. The morning after the Sato's left, Sam saw it. Keiko's bicycle in front of his house. On the handlebars was a pair of blue wool socks with a note. Dear Sam, here are the socks I knitted for Mike. Tell him to come home safely. Your friend and neighbor, Keiko. P.S. You can borrow my bike until I get back. Sam shivered. The desert where Keiko was going would be cold at night. In his mother's yarn bag, Sam found a ball of red wool. Socks were too hard to make, but Sam could knit something else for Keiko. He remembered Mrs. Olson's advice. Pick up the yarn, wrap it around the needle, pull the stitch through. Click, clack, click, clack. Come home safely, Mike and Keiko. Click, clack, click, clack. Come home safely. Sam's needles flew faster and faster, and rows of red stitches grew inch by inch. Dear Keiko, I wanted to make this scarf for you to wear while you're away. Your friend, Sam. If you liked this video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. See you next time on Read Right Now.